Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today, this is going to be something a little bit different. Um, so this is going to be my first YouTube video um, doing voiceovers, but without really using a script. Um, so let's just, it's going to be a little wild, I assume. I'm not really used to this um, just yet, but hopefully with some practice it will become better. Um, so today, um, this video was going to be about the Puss in Boots franchise and personally how much I like it. <laughs> um, I've been a fan of the franchise for a few years now and I just really want to talk about my love for it and I didn't know how else to present it so I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna smash all this information into one video and it'll be great. Um, and also, in the background, as you can see, um, I have a speed paint or drawing of Team Friendship. I'll explain a little bit later of them during this video. So, just gonna talk about it and see how this goes. But if you're not entirely interested of me talking about the franchise and just want to see the time lapse of the drawing, then that's perfectly fine too. As long as you like the video, um, that's great. So yeah, let's just get started. So. Pretty much, I started liking the franchise, I think back, like in 2020, I think? Yeah. I think I found out about it during, like, when I was on YouTube, I was, like, looking, I was, like, on YouTube, a Puss in Boots clip from the first movie, like, a clip from the first Puss in Boots movie came up, and I was like, oh, this is, this is cool, I, I, I want to see it. Like, at that point, I was already aware that the movie existed and stuff, but I just wasn't paying attention to it until, like, I watched it. I think it was a dance scene. I'm, like, thinking about it, like, I don't remember which dance scene it was, but I'm pretty sure it was one of them. The first movie had, like, three of them. Um, but, like, I'm pretty sure it was one of those clips. And I was like, oh my god, it's so cool. <laughs> and so, I looked at more clips from the movie and I was like, oh my god, this is so cool, I want to watch this entirety. And so, I soon watched it and like, I would just like, think about it constantly. Like, it was just like, like, I remember like, I loved the character, the, like, the character interaction and stuff. I remember the animation was really cool. I like how they still like, kept with like, the Shrek theme. I mean, obviously, because it is a Shrek spinoff, but... Personally, I, I don't really think about Puss in Boots as like a Shrek spinoff to me. Like, like I know it's a spinoff, but I just can't really picture a spinoff. Like, I, I just don't. But like, but like, I remember I loved the first movie. I also like the different character relationships in that movie. Like, with Puss and Humpty and how their brother relationship was sort of, was sort of like, handled. Also, uh, Puss and Kitty's relationship. So pretty much, I loved these two, can I just say? Like, these two, I loved these two as a couple, they were amazing. Um, and I also think, like, the villains, um, for Jack and Jill, personally, I think they were fine. They were, <laughs> they, like, they were, they were fine villains, I can say. I remember just, like, thinking the first movie was, like, oh, this is so good. I, I think this was during the time when, like, the second movie was like just starting to be announced and so i was like oh i wonder how they're gonna top this <laughs> and i'll i'll talk about that later but like i remember like being like i, I really liked the movie and to this day to this day i still like the movie for what it is like i, w I would still like give it like a 7.5 or 8 out of 10 um in that range i, I still think the movie is good i would watch it again so yeah, that was pretty much it of the first movie. I remember when I saw the teaser trailer that got released for the movie and I was- And I remember just like being, being really happy and just like- And just being like, oh my god, this is actually happening, like, the movie is actually gonna be a thing. And, um, and I still remember the day when that first trailer came out and I remember just like being in the dining room and watching it and me just being taking in all this information what was just like and like seeing how the animation looked and like seeing the characters again that i loved so much it was just like it was so amazing to see 
and I, that's just like a day that I'll just like forever remember <laughs> because I remember just being so happy and being so excited for the movie. Um, and um, and like looking at the trailer now, it's crazy how like some of the scenes looked very different in the trailer than the actual movie. Because in the trailer, it really, at least to me, it made it really look like that Goldilocks and the Three Bears were going to be the main villains. I mean, they, like, they kind of, like, cent centered, not centered, but just, like, they really, like, said in the fact that, oh, these Goldilocks and the Three Bears are trying to take down Puss. Like, like, it, like to me, it made it look like they were going to be the main villains. When, in, in reality, well, spoilers, you didn't see the movie, but, like, they, they kind of, they're sort of, like, half villains not not villains but just like they sort of like sort of half antagonists in a way like they don't seem like really evil people or characters in a way and also another spoiler alert the death wolf he only appeared in the trailer for like two shots <laughs> like two shots i'm pretty sure he only appeared in that little amount of time and for me when i saw that wolf i was like oh that's scary but uh it's just gonna be like a one-off obstacle or something no you have no idea how wrong i was <laughs> like I, I just didn't really think about it i just sort of brushed him off but no <laughs> like it's actually an important character movie um and also some like different scenes in the trailer and of course like i'm not gonna complain about that i mean like i can respect when like trailers scenes are different in the movie i can respect that because it really lets you have more surprises when watching the movie, and I respect that. So, first of all, I really like the animation. There's been a lot of praise about the animation, and, like, for example, the statement that they wanted to, like, make the movie more of, like, a fairy tale look, making it look like a storybook come to life. I think that was a really good idea, because, like, it really enhances the fact that it, it's a fairy tale universe. And I, and I think with, with that art direction of making the colors, like, right, making the animation more cartoony and, like, making the colors more, like, brighter, it really pushed that more, like, creative aspects to the, like, for example, the backgrounds and the textures. And also adding the aspect of 2D animation, I think that was, like, a really good inspiration, more interested in, like, the art direction, because I think it's, like, really, like, contrasting, but not too different. You guys see like more interested on like what's happening on screen, <clears throat> and I and like also like the little details that they put, like for example, like Puss and Kitty's reflections into each other's eyes, like the meaning behind it. That's so good, and also like the hidden messages, like for example in Goldilocks's books, and also just like the facial expressions that the characters do. I just think it just it just adds a little touch and little details to it that. All of those things put together, like, it really shows how much care they did put into this movie, and I really appreciate that. Uh, it, it's really appreciated. Next, we're going to talk about the characters in this movie. Um, so, for Puss in Boots, I think, like, his personality, like, him, like, sort of becoming narcissistic, and, like, he doesn't really, like, care about his lives in the beginning. I think it was an interesting take on his personality because I think he was always sort of like the confident type and like seeing like how all of that could crumble and like and, like him like realizing oh I'm going to die and I don't know I don't know how to feel I don't know what to do about this like seeing him in his vulnerable in his vulnerable state seeing him crumble like it really like makes you like feel for him um Especially for like what he encounters in the movie with um, the wolf at the bar, like like seeing like with his line in the song of who's never been touched by a blade, and then him literally being cut by one. It also like changed Puss's point of view because throughout the middle of the movie, he's just been more he was more he was more caring about his life, but like not in the right way. It's like it was more like, oh, I have to protect this life and make sure that I'm alive. And then like seeing him throughout the movie, like learning to appreciate the other people around him and learning from his previous from his previous mistakes. And like at the end, like 
yeah, he has one life, but he's going to care for it this time and make sure he values it and and like he's always going to fight for it. And I think that was such big character development. It's like it's a really important lesson to learn. I mean personally to me, I feel like it did kind of help me a little bit because okay, it's going to get a little bit personal here, but a little bit before this movie came out, I was like I did feel like I was more conscious about my mortality like at like at that point during my life I was more aware of like hey there's a possibility that I could die and and like I was just like I was so focused on that and I feel like and like this movie like kind of helped me in a way to like make me realize that instead of like focusing on that I should like focus on like being happy that I am, am so alive and like and like not focusing on the bad stuff but like focusing on the good stuff where it's like I, I'm spending like I'm spending time with people I care about and you know being happy and all that stuff and I feel like like that message is just so great okay I'm back to character development um, so next up is Kitty. So I personally think that Kitty is a really interesting character. Her backstory with her previous owners and her and Puss's like Santa Coloma incident, which would lead her to not trust anyone. Like I think that was like, I think that was a good storyline for her because it makes her character more interesting with like her losing like trust in people and so throughout the movie we see her like interacting with Puss and Perito during the journey but yet to like see her trusting them more and more throughout the movie and with Perito's help and with Puss's apology and at the end of the movie when they have their fallout like it really shows how much Puss's betrayal hurt her because for one that she's starting to tear up out of just like pure pain but also because of just like everything that they went through during the journey like with with their agreement to share the wish and his apology for Santa, for Santa Coloma like throughout that movie like their their connection just she thought that it was reconnecting in a way but when Puss like frantically tells Kitty that death is coming for him at first she doesn't really understand but then like when the wolf comes in it's really taken in like oh this is an actual threat for puss and when he learns to value his life um and he's fighting with him i assume through the fire kitty can see that puss really cares for them and like he didn't he didn't want to betray them but but he was just scared for his mortality and all which is a really big deal for him because he wasn't used to feeling this way in the end, they're happy with each other's wishes and how the journey turned out. And, and Kitty gains Puss and Perito as trustful companions in her life. Plus, he values his life and he wants to spend it with her, which I think is really sweet. Really like how it played out. Also, her personality is just also like really fun. Like she's like she's sassy. She she knows what she wants. And I think like her like her like her character just like it's like really fun, you know? Right? And I think I think she's a good addition to the franchise. Perito. Perito, the kind soul that he is. I really like Perito. I think he's such a fun character to add. You could just see him as like this like random comedic character that you could just put in. But no, he like he really like he really helps out the protagonist. Like he wants to be a therapy dog. And him helping Puss with his panic attack, I think it's a really impactful scene. He like he is just so naive to the world that you just really care for him, just like, oh Burrito, you don't know. <laughs> like his backstory, like it's it's so bad. <laughs> like even though he doesn't have a wish, he still goes with Puss and Kitty because you know, he he sees Puss as his friend and eventually Kitty as his friend and he just wants to go with them and I think it, it's it's so cute and I really love that and also Perito going off like <laughs> when I saw that scene in the theater I was my mouth was wide open 
we all need a Perudo in our lives where we just need to be constantly remembered of, you know, like the good and positive things around us. And I think he, like, he's such a, a good soul. And I just, and I love that. Like when I saw him during the trailer, I thought that he was just going to be like a Humpty 2.0. Where, not exactly Humpty, like a villain, but like, Humpty as in like the annoying, like not annoying, but just kind of annoying aspect of Humpty's character. But no, I actually genuinely really liked the movie. And now he's become one of my favorite characters in the Shrek franchise. So yeah, I think that him helping not only with Pussy Kitty, but also with Goldie finding her family with the bears. I, I think that was such a sweet moment for her because even though like, the scene is really short and Perito doesn't really say much. It still really impacted her and it and it helped her like realize that about the bears. So yeah, I just overall think that Perito was just it's just like a really nice character. I I'm sorry if I don't really have a lot to say, but like I just think that like overall he's just like a really nice and like really caring he is loyal because like even when Puss and Kitty like have their argument on the wishing star. Perito is obviously hurt by Puss because Puss was his first like friend that he had and seeing him betray Kitty was just obviously heartbreaking for him. And also like the facial expressions that Perito does is just adorable and iconic. Now for Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now to be honest, I, I do think they are a really great set of characters and I think they're really fun. Like even though they're not personally my favorite of the bunch. I can see why people would really like them. Their personalities are really are really cute. The dynamic between Goldie and Baby was was pretty funny. The relationship between Goldie and Mama Bear and Papa Bear are really sweet. You can tell like they really did care for Goldie. They really like did think of them as their daughter and still do. There were a lot of genuine moments between them and like they really did seem like they even with obstacles in the way they still truly care for one another and they seem like a really good and in interesting fun family so yeah and so for jack corner <laughs> um i kind of went into this movie not really knowing that jack corner was gonna be in the movie because he was i don't think he was even in the trailer which is actually kind of sad so Justice for Jack Horner. He's not even in the poster. Justice for Jack Horner. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But like basically, I think he was a really fun villain. There were a lot of iconic moments from him. Like him with the cricket. Him with the cricket just made everything better. <laughs> um, because like the cricket was just trying so hard to like make him be good or like at least like redeem himself. But Jack just like didn't care on the slightest. <laughs> he has so many iconic moments in the movie. So you're not gonna shoot a puppy, are you, Jack? Yeah, in the face. Sorry. <laughs> and um, it's like you're an irredeemable monster. Oh, what took you so long, idiot? Boom. <laughs> He's just so like like bad of a villain. Like bad as in like a character, and he knows it. It's like he knows that he's bad, and he doesn't care in the slightest. Because he, he wants everything in the world and he thinks that in the only way to, to achieve that is to be evil because then he could like get what he wants to be feared by people. Like I just think it's like so interesting how like he has all of this stuff that he's like really like valuable items in his life but he's just like never happy. Kind of shows the message of like be grateful for what you have. Jack being from a mansion with a rich family and inheriting a popular pie business. Apparently that wasn't enough for him, so good for him. His defeat, he earned that defeat. He, he literally said, what did I do to deserve this? Dude, you literally killed people on the journey. Jack Horner, <laughs> you, you think that you didn't do anything wrong? I thought you said that you knew that you were bad. Like, what was that about? And the last character that I want to talk about, last but not least, Death. R Death Wolf. In the trailer, like I said earlier, he was only in there for like two shots, two camera shots. And I thought that he was just going to be like a one-off villain that was just going to be like brushed to the side sort of thing. I was very wrong. <laughs> it turns out to be like the main driving force of why Puss is on this journey to begin with. 
is the one that made his ego go like very down in the moment. And like I really like the artistic choice that he did not appear a lot in the movie. All of those like subtle hints that he was death, I think it's such good ideas with the map and with the skulls. Like I think I think it was just such a good job. I just think that like the message of him with in the fight with Puss. It's so true and and like it, it really makes sense and it's really impactful too because what they say is like death is a force of nature and you can't get rid of him. It's going to happen to you someday. I once heard someone say that the best thing you can do is just live, is just like value your life and just like live the, like the most happy you can. And I don't know if like some people might think that could be kind of sad or still have a little bit of fear. I still think it's like still important to know that because you can't just like focus on bad thing like it you like it's going to be better focusing living happily and spending time with the people you care about like the death character in the movie he wasn't i keep hearing people saying like oh like he, is he a villain is he an antagonist personally i think he's more of an antagonist because he's not really evil per se i just think He's like really tough, but still fair because he realized that Puss values his last life and so he is going to let him live because he can see that he changed for the better. So what do I think about the future for the franchise? As far as I know now, I did hear that Trek 5 is in development. As much as I want to see the film, I'd rather wait a very long time to have a good movie in the end. I just hope that the people who are making the movie will take their time to make it and make it a proper story and stuff. Pretty much, I think the future of the franchise is, it does seem good right now. And I would like to see more installments, but I don't want things to be too rushed. Anyways, that is it for this video. I really did want to talk about my love for the Puss in Boots franchise because it's, a, it's such a big part of my love for animation and and also for DreamWorks, like they did a good job with this franchise, in my opinion. They did a good job. <laughs> Hopefully that they still do the story justice. So overall, thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you like these type of videos, and if you do, then I'll continue to make them. Thank you once again, and hope you have a good day. Bye!